All right. Um, as a believer, do you believe that there is a price we need to pay? That is the question today. I want to start this teaching by saying that there is none. There is no price to pay, guys. There is no price to pay. As a believer, there is no price to pay. Listen, how can you pay for something that's free? Uh, how can you pay for something that's free? <laughs> okay, she's saying you thought about it, but you didn't say it. All right. Look at if you look at Romans, Romans chapter eight verse thirty two, the Bible says that if he did not spare his son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? So my question to you is, how can you pay for something that is free? Hmm. So instead of asking um, what is the price that every believer must pay, how about asking? How about asking the question, how can you pay for what is free? So instead of answering the first question, answer the second one. How can you pay for something that's free? Hmm. Listen, this teaching has got a basis and I want you to see beyond. And I'm sure that by the end of this, you'll be able to understand what exactly God is trying to say. All right. How do you pay for something that is free? How do you pay for something that is free? Remember that Jesus, when he was on the cross, he made a very crucial statement, which I believe is the foundation for every believer to tread upon. Jesus said, it is finished. What did that statement mean? So today we're really going to dive into realities in the word of God that will, that, will be, that will enable us to stand on our feet so that we can walk and carry out the purpose of God. Right? So if you go to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Okay, if you go to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 2, the Bible says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Hmm. For the law of the Spirit, like I said, I'm going to take it slow so that we can understand. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So what does sin and death, what did it represent? Because the Bible has made us to understand that there was a law of sin and death. And remember the Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So meaning to say that back then, the power of sin was death. Now we need to understand that sin and death is a representation of an outcome of a series of events. In other words, to attain these two um, realities, you had to be performing works. Meaning to say, do A and you see B. If you don't do this, you won't see that. That is what the law represented. Do this and you will see this. Do not do this and this is what's going to happen. So it was uh, an action reaction thing. If you do something, there was an outcome as a result of that action that you have taken. So the Bible is saying that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law. So the Bible there is trying to say that we have been freed from works. We have been freed from works. We are, we, are, we are going somewhere. So the sin and death there is a representation of an outcome of occurrences of a series of events. Mm. Are you guys still with me? Then verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Get this, guys. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So when Jesus said that it is finished, what that actually meant is that the righteousness which was of the law was fulfilled in us. Hmm. Oh God. When Jesus said it was finished, he didn't, he didn't mean that, that we have ceased from works. That's not what he meant. When he said that it is finished, he meant that the righteousness which was of the law. Remember that, that, the, that, that the glory that Moses saw was just something that was to fade away. It was a shadow of the things to come. And Moses is a representation of the law, a system of works that experiences an outcome. But here the Bible is saying that when Jesus said that it is finished, what he actually meant is that the righteousness which was of Moses, which was of the law, which was, was, which was fading, which was, which was a shadow of the things to come. Mm. Ah, okay, let me slow down. It was a shadow of the things to come. Now here the Bible is saying that the righteousness which was of the law may be fulfilled in us. So when Jesus said it is finished, it was a fulfillment of the righteousness which was of the law. Remember that the law was a shadow of the things to come. So we are, we are talking about an old reality. So if we are talking about what price the believer has to pay, there is none. Hmm. Hmm. Remember that we are not walking after the flesh anymore. We are walking after the spirit by reason of the indwelling of the spirit of God in us. Listen, I, I, I want us to go to Isaiah 55. Yes, yes, bro, you're getting the message. The, the, the righteousness of the, of the law, it was a shadow of the things to come. Now look at what Isaiah 55 verse 1 says. Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. I'll ask you again. How can you buy without money? Two, how can you buy something that has no price? Good questions. How can you buy without money? That's the first question. Number two, how can you buy something that has no price? Hmm. Now get this, because something has no price doesn't mean that it was not paid for. Hmm. Let me give this analogy. When you go to a store, for example, I'm in Cyprus, when you go to Le Mans, right? In every section, there are products. Jesus is the eternal source. Amazing, you're getting the message. When you get into Le Mans, they are what we call aisles and in those aisles they are more or less shelves and on those shelves they are products but you see when we go to those aisles and we look on the shelves where the products are they are price tags hmm. or let me give another vivid example sometimes you go into like shoe stores or whatever boutiques those products have prices on them but guess what happens when you purchase that product the price is taken off oh god when you purchase the product the price tag the price is taken off so this is what jesus did he paid for it so that you wouldn't have to pay he he, he paid for it so that you wouldn't have to work Remember that when God placed Adam in the garden, his original intent was for Adam to tend the garden, not to toil. Because to toil is to work, to labor. But God's intention was that Adam would manage what God had already put in place for him. So God's original intent for man is not that he toils, but he tends. So that something was given to you for free doesn't mean that it, it did not cost anything. Hmm. So what Jesus did was that he paid it because you could not pay for it. So to say that, that every believer must pay a price, it means that, there is a, that we must meet a criteria. And bear in mind that no man was able to fulfill the law except Jesus. Because the Bible says that Jesus came 
not to destroy the law or to abolish the law but he came to fulfill the law and the prophets so jesus was the only person that was able to fulfill the law so if we are talking about a price that every believer must pay then we are talking about a criteria that every man must meet hmm. guys jesus does not call the qualified he qualifies the cord <laughs> God called you first. Hmm. There is no criteria for you to meet. You are predestined. Oh God. Listen. I, I hope I hope you're getting the message. Yes, exactly. Price taken off does not devalue the item. Exactly. That is why the Bible talks about the free gift of righteousness. Guys, everything that a man has, he was given. Everything that a man has, he was given. That is why Romans 8 verse 32 said, If God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, oh, how will he not with him freely give us all things? Mm. So it was through Jesus that God the Father was able to reach his people. Mm. <sighs> Listen, it was through the Son, who was the eternal word, that the, the, there, was, there was no other uh, uh, worthy vessel that God could, could use hmm, to reach his people. And so he had to come by himself. Remember that God's intention was to reconcile the world back to God. Because that presence that Adam lost needed to be restored. And God had to come by himself. So there is nothing that you can do hmm, to earn what God has given to you or what God will give to you. There is nothing that you can possibly do to earn what God is going to give or has given to you. Listen, Jesus revealed a mystery in, in, in John 14. He said that in my father's house are many mansions. Hmm. That, that is a very funny statement to make. Because how can there be a mansion in a house? <laughs> Think about it. Jesus said that in my father's house are many mansions. How can there be mansions in a house? If anything, they, they should be a house in a mansion. <laughs> so what was Jesus talking about there? He says, in my father's house are many mansions and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. But remember that this was before Jesus had died. Hmm. So what was the Bible talking about there? In my father's house are many mansions. <laughs> in my father's house are many mansions. What Jesus meant that in his father's house are many realities, many possibilities. Uh, in my father's house are many realities, many possibilities. And then he says, behold, I go to the father to prepare a place for you. But then he says that I shall come back to you and I shall take you unto myself. Uh, and then he said that so that where I am, you may be also. And then uh, Thomas asked him, how, how, can we, how, how can we go to a place that we don't know? How can we, how can we, we don't know where you are going. How can we go to a place that we don't know? Then Jesus says, I am the way. <laughs> I am the way, I am the way, I am the way, the truth and the life that no one goes to the Father except through the Son. Guys, I'm trying to make you understand the new reality that we have been placed into, the new reality that we've been called to. Ah, guys, is the message, is the message sitting in? Okay, let's, let's, let's turn it down a little bit. I want to hear from you guys. Are you guys still here? 
It is a new reality. It is a new reality. It is a new reality. Guys, we have passed from death to life. There is no price to pay. How can you pay for something that has already been paid for? Jesus freely gave it to you. <laughs> freely. There is nothing now that you can ever do that can change God's mind towards you. The Bible says that, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father pleading, pleading on our behalf. That even if you fall, his blood still cries for mercy on your behalf. There is nothing you can ever do. That is why Apostle Paul says that I'm fully persuaded that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Understanding that everything that we are experiencing now and everything we ever experience is not as a result of anything we have done, but what he has given, what he has made available. He says, in my father's house are many mansions, many realities, many possibilities. Hmm. There is no price to pay. There is no price that the believer must pay because these things have freely been given. Listen, Jesus says that I'm going to prepare a place for you. Listen, if I, if I give you an invitation and say, come to my house, I am going to prepare a meal for you. Huh. I'm not expecting anything other than your presence. Oh God, I'm not expecting anything from you other than your presence. I will do the cooking. I will buy whatever needs to be bought. All you need to do is come. Oh, oh my goodness. So Jesus is revealing that there are realities in his father. There are realities in him. Because bear in mind he says that I am in the father and the father is in me. It is a new reality entirely. We need to throw away that mindset. There is no difference. We just use words to try to help our minds to understand. There is no difference. Father, Son, Spirit, they are all one. The Bible says that he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. In the spirit, we are all one. There is no, there, you can't separate the two. We are one. All right? So I've prepared everything and I tell you to come. That is what Jesus did. That you do not have to put a hand in it. That he orchestrated the plan for salvation by himself. And he executed it by himself. So then who are we to think that we can carry out the purpose of God by ourselves? Hmm. That is why Jesus said that it is not I but my father which is in me that doeth the works. That is our reality. Remember that Jesus said that I and my father shall make our abode in you. That is why Apostle Paul said, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Oh God. And Romans says that how that Christ died, or rather, he was raised to life. Oh my goodness. He was raised to life. That is, that is our, our new reality. We have been raised to life. Remember that the Bible says that when, we bar when he was buried, we were buried with him. When he resurrected, we, we resurrected with him. Guys, that is our new reality. We are raised to life. We are raised to life. Jesus says that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. That is our reality. It is our reality of life. Now, what, what we as believers talk about, because many will think um, the price that every believer must pay is that we need to fast. Hmm. Believers believe that the price we need to pay is prayer. Hmm. Believers believe that the price we need to pay is persecution. Hmm. This, 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 these all are amazing, amazing things, but we need to understand from when, whence they come from. Why we do all these activities, where they stem from. I love what Apostle uh, Peter said. He asked Jesus that, we have left all and we have followed you. What shall we have then? Remember that the apostles were with the message. They associated with the message. 
By the message I mean Jesus. They're associated with the way. They're associated, they associated with life. And Peter asked him, We have left all and we have followed you. What shall we have then? We have left all and we have followed you. What shall we have then? Listen guys. Peter said that we have left everything. We have left everything. Jesus did not ask them to leave everything. They themselves left everything and followed him. Hmm. The Bible says that the goodness of God induces, it, it, it induces repentance. The goodness of God induces repentance. And remember that they are associated with the word. They are associated with the message. They are associated with life himself. It is the message that induced a conviction within them to leave everything they had just for the sake of the gospel. So when, when, when we say that, uh, that we, are, we are fasting and we are praying, when we say that uh, we, we, we sold everything that we had so that we can serve God, that is not a price, oh God. That comes by reason of your association with the eternal word your association with the eternal message. That message induces conviction. Hmm. Even the Bible in Matthew said that affliction and persecution arose because of the word. Listen, persecution, affliction, they, they come as a result of what is inside. Persecution, afflictions, troubles of the world, whatever you may call, storms, winds, they come as a result of what is inside. Ah. So it's not because of you. It's because of the word. Ah. To you, persecution is a reward. <laughs> Affliction, persecution is a reward. <laughs> It's not because of you. It is because of the word. So always remember in a time of affliction. Listen, there will come a time. The Bible does say it. When you be persecuted just because you are a Christian. And I need you to understand that you are being persecuted because of what is inside. Always remember that in the time of persecution. The reason is solemnly because there is something in you. There is an eternal word, oh God. There is an eternal river. There is the life of God. Remember that Jesus said that I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That is our, our new reality, life. Life everlasting, life eternal. Whatever you experience in the world, remember Jesus told his disciples that in the world there will be tribulations. Whatever you're experiencing is as a result of what is inside. If you had no word, <laughs> you would be a commoner. There would be nothing. There would be nothing in you if the word was not in you. But it is because of that word that you are experiencing what you are experiencing now. So when we talk about the price that every believer must pay, mm, there is no price. Jesus paid the price. <laughs> Jesus paid the price. So now my responsibility, now that the price has been paid, come, Isaiah says, come, he that thirsts, let him come to the waters, come, come and buy with no money and without price. You see, all these realities that Jesus revealed, that in his father's house are many mansions, all these realities, all these possibilities, they are accessible by faith. See, God help my tongue. There is no price you can pay to access the anointing of the Spirit. There is no price you can pay to access the life of God. Oh my goodness. There is no price you can pay to access the gift of God. They were freely given. They were freely given. And so Jesus is saying that in, his in Him are many realities. In Him are many realities. All you have to do is come. Come. Do you know that to come is an expression of your faith? You see, 
faith is, is your passport. If you understand the importance of your passport, that's what faith is. Faith is your passport. That is why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. There is nothing you can possibly do. There is nothing you can possibly do to attain. There is nothing you can possibly do to achieve. If not the Father himself. Remember that Jesus said that, that it is not I but the Father in me doeth the works. Guys, we cannot effectively carry out the purpose of God without being aided. What you think is you is really not you. That is why the Bible talks of the effectual workings of the word of God in us. Guys, this is the message. This is the message. This is life. This is life. This is life. That Jesus was raised to life. That Jesus died or rather was raised to life. That when he was buried, we were buried with him. And when he resurrected, we resurrected with him. This is the message. The eternal word. Oh. <laughs> Man. I'm so excited that you guys could be a part of this. I'm just, I'm just as excited as you are. I'm so happy that you guys were so responsive. And that the message is sitting in. I'm just reading through what you guys have been typing, man. God is really doing an awesome work here. It is my hope that, that the message of God is finding expression. There is the, this is the time of urgency. That God is putting emphasis on this message. This is the good news. This is the good news. It is the goodness of God that induces repentance. Forget about it. That person you have been praying about, the person you desire that God should save, it is only the goodness of God that can induce repentance. That we should never ever think that it's because of something that we can do. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. That there is no one that can behold the face of God and look away. Those that have tasted. That is why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It is only when you taste that you can see. Once, once you have a taste, once you drink. Remember what Jesus said. He said that he that, come, he, he that thirsted, let him come to the waters. Because if you drink of the waters... Of these waters you shall thirst again. But if you drink of the waters that I give, you shall never thirst. Once you taste, once you taste, there's no going back. What we believe is, is the criteria or the price we need to pay really isn't. Just come as you are. One experience with God can be the turning point. One experience with God can turn you from a sword to a paw. Just one experience with the eternal word. One experience in my father's house and many mansions are many realities. Many, many realities that I've got so much to show you now but you cannot bear them now. The kingdom of God is full of realities is full of realities that it is your experience that you are taking to the nations that is why john said that that which we have seen that which we have heard pertaining the word of life that which we have handled pertaining the word of life that we bring unto you you cannot take to the nations what you've not experienced yourself it is your experience that you are taking Guys, I, I love you. I really do. I really do. I thank you for, for joining in. I thank you for joining in. I, hopefully, I wasn't, too, I wasn't too, too rough, you know. Or I wasn't too blatant. But this is the word of truth. This is the word of life. This I submit to you. 
this I submit to you. All right, guys, let me close. Let me close. Let me close. I want to hear from you guys. How 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 is this message sitting in? How is the message sitting in? As the word of God is being shared, there's an atmosphere, and in those atmospheres, there are many experiences that can be induced from them. There is no way that God's word can be taught and you not be open to an atmosphere where you can hear from God. As we are talking about God, God is manifesting himself. So I want to know what, what you guys learned from this. For those that just joined us now, as I can see, God bless you. And I'm going to save this live streaming so that those that weren't able to join can join in later on. And also, um, I decided to create some sort of archive for these uh, messages because believe it or not this message is not my message this message is is about jesus and we need to um, find as many opportunities to make sure that these messages are, are accessible there is someone that needs to hear this exactly there is no price to pay how can you pay for something that is free <laughs> How can you pay for something that is free? Yeah. Man. I just had an experience. Exactly. Yes. That's the message. That there is no price to pay. Just come as you are. Just come as you are. Engage your faith. Be a radical. Be a radical. Engage your faith. There is nothing God has not done. That is why every time Jesus did something significant, he would always marvel at people's level of unbelief. That he had told them multiple, multiple times, still they did not believe. And Jesus would say, haven't I told you that if you, you believe, you shall see the glory of God? That is all that is left to do, just believe. Really? Really? Do you believe that, that Cyprus will be saved? Do you believe that there will come a time when, 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 when the locals will be preaching the gospel, taking this gospel? I don't mean we preaching to them, them preaching. Do you believe? Do you believe that, that a revival can break out in this nation while you are still here? Do you believe? Do you believe that God can move once again? Do you believe that a fire can spread through? Do you believe? God can do it. God has done it before. He can do it again. I refuse to believe that I'll be in a generation where, where God did not move. I, I refuse to believe. God, if there's no one that believes, I believe. I believe. But there's no criteria. There's nothing I can do to meet that criteria. Man, all right. I think I, I, I'm relieved in my spirit. So I just know that the message has sat in well. And I'm so happy that you guys received the message well. All right, guys, I love you. Um, share the message. Um, yeah, we may be done now, but just share the message so that others can also hear this. Others can also partake of what God has done here. And I believe that the purpose of God shall not go unfulfilled in you. I believe that every gift in you shall never be dormant. That whatever fire you need, whatever you need this season to help your faith, God is helping you right now. Whatever clarity you need, God is giving you clarity right now. That God will help you on this journey. That you are not carrying out this assignment by yourself but God himself as I close I love what the Bible says that God wrought mighty 
signs and wonders through the hands of the apostles. It is God that does the works, not us. It's God. Let God be God. I love you guys. I think I've said this like five times, but I really do. Okay. All right, good night. Deuces.